get in there. Hugo, how did you get in here? Oh, the chap at the front door. He was quite delightful. Could I possibly borrow your day date? Absolutely not. The last time you borrowed a watch, you returned it and it was covered in blood. Don't be such a spoil sport. Oh, come on, darling. I'm attending a little soiree tonight with Tiddlywinks, the Triceratops. Look, you can borrow it, but only if you beat me at Street Fighter 2. How about that? Oh, huzzah. If I win, I get one of the bottles of vintage Chateau Lafitte from that crate you've got stashed back in the paddock. You're on, but I insist on being bison. Bugger, how do, you, how do you do this? How do you play this blasted game? Take that, Hugo. Hadouken! Oh, come on, human, kick! That's it. Come on, kick, man. Blasted human controls. Mm. Here's those little T-Rex hands. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, a day date spectacular. In a little while, I'm gonna share my latest, my own day date. I've actually upgraded from my uh, previous yellow gold one, so I'll be sharing that with you and why I changed uh, to a different model. As I've discussed the history of the day date to death, and I've reviewed several models, I thought I'd present seven uh, affordable alternatives for you guys. Uh, some of my favorites, absolute favorites among them, uh, because obviously on this channel, I only talk about watches I've had experience with and can recommend. I know this seems to be this habit of talking about watches you've never even held in the flesh uh, on YouTube. I don't know what that's all about, but you guys, you know I do it differently here. Anyway, I'm already rabbiting on. Um, let me do wristwatch check. I'm wearing another Rolex, the Daytona. This is the 116520 that I'm in the process, in the middle of reviewing. I've already spent several days shooting it. I've still got to edit a few more days shooting, then a few more days editing. So hopefully in the following weeks, I'll present a full in-depth review. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so at number one, and I must state, this is in, in no order of preference. This is merely for reference. Now, Orient, as you guys know, is a favorite of the channel. Affordable, Japanese-made, completely in-house. They're a subsidiary of the Seiko Group, although they pretty much are independent. Founded uh, much later than Seiko in 1950. The reason I picked them is because they actually have made history with this particular combination of uh, complications. In 1967, one of their crowning achievements was to uh, make the world's thinnest, up until that point, mechanical watch with a day-date complication. It was called the Finesse. And fast forward to right now, you can still find their homage to the president on Amazon. That's the only thing I have to say, my only critique of this watch is that it's very, very much a homage. It doesn't really have the, the individual style traits that Orient have um, really introduced to their watches in the last decade. But you get their in-house mechanical caliber inside. It is 36 millimeters, it's a two-tone. There is a, ch a choice of gold-plated. Sometimes find them on eBay. They're quite affordable at $360 with sapphire glass. Quite an impressive value proposition there. The size and scale is very faithful to the Rolex. Because of that link to their own history of innovation with that achievement back in uh, the 60s, I think that we had to include uh, Orient here. You have a choice of dial, colors, beautiful sunburst effect there. You get the feel of a president, but at the same time, a brand you can actually be proud of that is historically important. 
Okay, number two is Hamilton. This is a slightly higher price range at around about five to $600, but we have the Jazzmaster. Now this you can also get on Amazon. Hamilton is a brand that needs no introduction. Uh, you guys know I'm a massive fan of this. Once American, it was actually founded here in Lancaster in 1892 and then became part of the Swatch Group. So it's actually been American uh, for longer than it has been Swiss, but that doesn't really matter because the consumer ends up getting the better deal. These are very affordable, beautifully made, Swiss made now. They have Swiss ETAs in there as well. Tough, robust, easy to repair and replace any parts. But what I really appreciate about this one is the style is intrinsically American. It's got these kind of Cadillac uh, 1950s curves to the lugs, beautiful beveling there. Again, we have a sunburst effect, smooth bezel, beautiful arrowhead faceted markers elegant dolphin hands, a nice symmetry to the date placement at the six. You can get this in a choice of dial colors and either on a strap or a bracelet. Premium materials with the sapphire glass, of course, a display case back to enjoy that movement. This is somewhat larger at 40 millimeters, uh, but tends to be a crowd pleaser that size. So once again, you've got the history, you've got a beautiful, uh, more uh, unique design this time. Uh, and if that's not enough, I would also look at the Khaki King. The reason I didn't nominate the Khaki King is just because I think it's very easy to go with that. Uh, I've talked about it, it was one of the first Hamiltons I ever featured on the, on the channel. So that is the kind of go-to day-date option. Here I wanted something a little bit more elegant and I think the Jazzmaster tends to get overlooked. I couldn't make a video without uh, Seiko. I mean, it'd be absolute heresy, wouldn't it? Um, horological heresy. So. There are a ton of Seiko 5s out there to choose from. The beautiful thing is it has a long, illustrious history. Introduced in the late 60s, designed to inspire a whole new generation into automatic mechanical watches. And it totally worked because at the same time, Seiko were being very, very clever and introducing quartz to the world. Now there's a whole stack of versions. You could go for the SNX, S79 with the black uh, dial, smooth bezel, $150. Or you could go with the SNK885K, which has a white dial, smooth bezel, or the SNXJ89 with the fluted bezel. That has been discontinued. The prices vary from about $100 all the way to several hundred for the more rarer versions. Now, the beautiful thing is you get the day-date complication. It's a mechanical watch with this legendary 7S26. So you've got that magic lever system. It really is a, a, the ideal combination because you get the feel, you get the look, although, and, and a ton to choose from. Uh, you get the history, the, the heritage of the revolutionary Seiko 5 line. And they're about 37 millimeters. Got hard legs, which I think is absolutely fine. Uh, so you really can't beat it. It's certainly the most affordable. Uh, actually, I can't think of any uh, watch, mechanical watches that, that is as good and as accessible as the Seiko 5. So of course it's in the list. And let's not forget Seiko was uh, founded in 1881. One of the most important watch brands to ever exist has changed the world more than any other um, any other force ever to exist in horology. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> I had to include Sega. In fact, as I'm talking, I'm looking at the SNK355 on Amazon right now. It's 109 bucks on Amazon Prime. I mean, can you get any better? No, you can't. Okay, at number four, we have Bulova. Now, Bulova was started all the way back in 1875 in New York. And I'd go so far as to say that it has even more history than Rolex. Probably not as many innovations and world firsts, but, you know, they had the Accutron, they had the Moonwatch, a very long established, illustrious history of American watchmaking that cannot be denied. However, they did have a little bit of a funny period and financial difficulties, hence why now they're owned by Citizen, a Japanese company. During that little strange time, they made the Super Seville, which is an ETA-based straight homage of 
the president. Those are getting hard to come by. I had a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, who uh, used to own one of those, and unfortunately they are a little bit tubby. On the wrist, they don't actually feel like a uh, Rolex president, although they do certainly look like them. However, I'd recommend a modern quartz 96C127. Has the same date and day placement, very minimal, very tastefully done, extremely affordable at 125 bucks on Amazon. 39 millimeters, it's a crowd pleasing size. Most importantly, you get that uh, tuning fork logo, which means just so much. Okay, so what about some luxury options? Well, at number five, we have the Omega Seamaster Aqua Terra. As we all know, founded in 1848, the oldest brand we're gonna talk about today, the main rival to Rolex. And of course, the Seamaster is an important line. It's probably the most important because it was the longest continually running and still is to this day. Now, these days we, commonly more associate the Seamaster to their divers, but actually when it started in 1948, the Seamaster line, it was originally more kind of dressy. Then it, with the trilogy in, in 1957, it took on a more dive watch role, especially as dive watches, uh, that was the age they were predominantly introduced, the rest is history. So this in a way is more faithful to the original spirit of the Seamaster, the pre-diving Seamasters. Of course, day-date complication, but inside we have the revolutionary Amiga 8602, which is a coaxial based, that invention that uh, Amiga took on from the legendary British horologist, George Daniels. This gives it incredible performance, a beautiful tapestry style dial. This is a 41 millimeter watch, 150 meters water resistant, it's COSC certified, and it's the only uh, watch on the list that you can say has the Bond connection because of course, James Bond did wear an Aquaterra at some point. I th was it Casino Royale? Guys, do correct me, but I know he did wear one at some point. Now these retail at about 7,000, 700, but of course you can get them significantly more affordable. Watchbox typically has them for under $5,000. Very stylish, comes on a strap, impeccably made from an equally prestigious Swiss brand. Uh, this is a bit of a soft spot in the Amiga line, certainly. Okay, at number six, we have something from Breitling. It is the Transocean Day Date. Now, I actually reviewed this many moons ago, donkeys years ago. It was originally released in 1958 and then re-released much later in the last, I think, 2000s. It's extremely faithful to the, uh, the 50s original. So with the success of the Super Ocean and the Navi Time in the 50s, they wanted something not necessarily for the pilot, this time for those sitting in first class. And the day date, very minimal, very plain, which is not what you typically expect from Breitling, you know, very busy, toolish aviation, lots of uh, scales and, and all the rest of it. ETA based, which is COSC certified, as is all Breitling mechanical watches. 100 meters water resistant with this crosshair on the dial, kind of sporty, but not too dressy that you uh, wouldn't want to wear it casually. It's definitely got that versatility, beautifully made of course, and always overlooked. Everybody is gonna go towards the more you know, the, the favorites as do I, you know, as a big Navi Timer fan, um, this is a sometimes forgotten about. Best place to pick one of these up is of course on the used market. Going with the watch box price, they have them at around three and a half grand, which I think is really great value for money. And I remember when I reviewed it all those years ago, I really liked it, but it's 43 millimeters. Probably a good thing because I really didn't need to buy another day date. Last, but by no means least, I could not make this list without talking about Tudor, the little brother brand to Rolex, also founded by Hans Wilsdorf. A little bit later in 1926, him being a big Anglophile, of course, named it after the um, British royal dynasty. Tudor, have been making their versions of the, the president 
uh, for quite a while, in fact. Uh, all the, I think the earliest ones were back in the 70s. The great thing is, is that you actually get a little bit of Rolex in there. The older versions are still signed on the crown and on the case back sometimes. In the 2000s, with the rejuvenation and revitalization and relaunch of Tudor, uh, they renamed it to the Glamour line and very much changed the identity and character of the day date away from just a straight alternative, a bit like the Tudor Submariners were, to their more of their own thing. Some people say that's a good thing. Personally, I prefer their old style. And you can still pick them up on the used market. There's plentiful supply. And if you notice, they actually changed the name around. It's the date day, not the day date. You have the Oyster case there. You have the same kind of feel, finish, everything that a Rolex has. But most importantly, in keeping with Hans Wilsdorf's intention with starting Tudor, it's more affordable because it has the ETA movement in there, which I think are great and I really do miss my little Tudor day date. In fact, I'll discuss that in just a moment. Now, my personal favorite reference is the 76200. You get a whole plethora of dial options, uh, fluted bezels, smooth bezels, gold, two-tone, uh, Jubilee, Oyster, you name it. All the quintessential Rolex traits are there. Expect to pay around um, 2,000 to 3,000 and for the really rarer ones, possibly even 4,000. But the most wonderful thing is you can't accuse it of being a homage because, well, it is, at the end of the day, part of the Rolex family. It's legitimately supposed to be an affordable alternative. Oh, and of course you get a screw down crown because it is oyster, uh, an oyster case there. Uh, so all the inherent toughness um, that you get with the, the, the versatile day date from Rolex, you get with the Tudor. So let's move on to this. There's my little, uh, you can see the manual there, my little upgrade. So as you guys remember in the summertime, I bought the 18038 to commemorate joining the Watchbox family. And I, I, I love my day date, you know, I, I really did love it. However, something that did annoy me about that particular version was the uh, single quick set. This is literally the later model and a slightly different dial uh, configuration. This is the reference 18238. Now the additional little two there tells you that it's actually the double quick set. Something that did annoy me about the, the previous one is having to cycle through the day of the week. Um, so you could only have quick set on the date and that was pretty much a product of its day. Also, it's a little bit thinner, this particular version. It's amazing how different this one is to its predecessor. I cannot stress how much not even a millimeter, I think it's a millimeter or, or just over a millimeter, the difference, but it changes it the way it wears completely. Even the way the um, entirely uh, yellow gold bracelet there hugs the wrist. And of course, I went with a slightly different dial configuration. This is actually the linen dial. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the champagne, but it was even a little bit too flashy for me, so to speak. And the thing I like about the linen dial is it reminds me of my very first day date, which was the Tudor I nicknamed the Henry, which I owned for about, I think about two years actually. So it's a little nod to that. I love the way linen plays with the light, uh, not so brash as champagne. I think the difference was about a couple of grand difference, but a worthy step up in my opinion. I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with this. But the best thing is, of course, I did it through Watchbox. And what I like about it is I don't even have to think. I took my previous day date back to them. A few days later, they check it over with their watchmaker. It's just standard policy, obviously, uh, to make sure that uh, there's no damage, stuff like that. Also to authenticate it if, uh, well, not, I mean, they trust me, but I mean, um, it's standard procedure. And then within a few days, I got my money and I put it towards this. So all I had to do really was put in, I think a few extra grand, and then I had the double quick set 
and a, a much more better fitting watch. The 18038 is rather tubby, I have to say. Don't get me wrong, I still adore that watch, but this one, I adore it even more. <laughs> so there we go. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna leave it there. Let me just carefully put my day date there. Let me know your nominations for the best Rolex president day date alternative in the comments below. Let's try and help out as many people as we can. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.